I've always loved pineapple upside down cakes. They are a classic and I feel like I need to have a cakeify it. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna bake some pineapple upside down cakes and turn them into an upside down pineapple. Mind blown. Actually, Orhan, can we have like a pineapple like exploding? Yes, maybe that's what you should, you guys should do. Oh wow. <laughs> By the time you see this episode, we will have filmed this. So let's see how that went. I really hope we don't hurt ourselves. <laughs> Keep that. Please tell you me we recorded that. that. Yeah, we were recording that. Good. There's no reason to be nervous. We went over this. You've always wanted to be a daredevil. This is your shot. Your hair looks great today. Oh, he, he's got gas. You understand? <laughs> uh, I don't think that's what was Sp what Spike was going for. Okay, we're gonna go back in. Warhan, you're scaring, you're scaring me. Warhan <laughs> is. <laughs> there was a kerfuffle. Oh boy, what happened? Oh man, that Spike. poor boy. Oh guys, uh, that was, yeah, that was something. Or hunt. Huh. I gotta admit, you pineapples are stronger and sturdier than I thought. A watermelon could never stand up to that. Well, no need to waste a good pineapple. So, I hope that was enjoyable for you. So I have my cake pans, and now what I want to do is brush that parchment paper with melted, unsalted butter. The next step is to sprinkle on some brown sugar. This is just to help the pineapple caramelize, plus I just love the taste of brown sugar. Then I have my cored pineapple, and then I want to lay them in the pan. Now this is sometimes tricky. So the first pan I did, and there was too much space, and I'm like, that space could be filled with pineapple. But then I realized, when I, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Aren't you? And there's great overhead footage. Thank you, Changus. Like, it's gonna look good. So I realized I could just cut the pineapple into more of a C, like make it go around a bit more. So I used pineapples as a template to cut my next set of pineapple. And then these fit in better, so they were fanned around. And now I can pour my cake batter on top. Spread the batter. You want it to be flat and you want to make sure it's filling in any pockets between pineapple slices. Now, here comes the spice mixture. It's basically sugar, cinnamon, and then freshly grated nutmeg. I use freshly grated nutmeg in my Grenada cake. I am using it today in this pineapple upside down cake. and. There's a cake coming up in a few weeks that I'm going to use it on again. Yes, I'm just gonna infuse more nutmeg. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel. You can use the icon right here and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss next week's cake or any cake after that. I think I'm gonna put out my own line of like graters. <laughs> Fair enough. Right? <laughs> Spice, I think that's good, a good idea. I, I think so too. Just keep it away from the very edge. You want it mainly in the middle, but just sort of leave it there. And then on top of that, I'm gonna scoop in another three quarters of a pound of batter and spread it over that spice mixture. Delicious. <sighs> now you can bake these until they're beautiful and smell like, like the smell. I think I'm gonna request this for my birthday in January, just a heads up. Oh, you <laughs> like other people making cakes for your birthday? <laughs> That must be nice. I'm going to level off the caramelization that is on the bottom of the cake, and I wanna make sure that all of my cakes are leveled to the same height. The next thing I wanna do is simple syrup my cake, so I'm gonna simple syrup the side that I have layered. If you've had your eye on Sir Squeeze for a while now, now is the time to get your own, because right now at howtocakeit.com, everything is on sale for up to 40% off. Sir Squeeze is waiting for you. He comes with attitude. He's already demanded 
his vacation time. Like he put it in the schedule himself. He's looking for suggestions on where to go. So comment below. I just don't want to run into him on my vacation. <laughs> it's time to fill and stack this cake with Italian meringue buttercream. It's very important that I place this cake on a board cut to size. So we're gonna make sure to fill and stack them right side up, pineapple side up. And the only thing I need to worry about with this cake is there's obviously a lot of moisture in these juicy pineapple slices. So I wanna make sure that my cake doesn't sway back and forth. Then I carefully place on the second pineapple upside down cake and repeat, and then finally the third. Here's something I didn't think about. I didn't like the thought of the top of the cake having pineapple because then all I'm gonna have is buttercream and fondant. And that's quite a lot of moisture, very close to fondant. And moisture and fondant are not friends. They would not go on vacation together. No. It's a good thing I have that fourth cake. Believe it or not, in my whole collection, I didn't have enough of my cake pans. So I used three regular eight inch round cake pans and then I had one that's like actually a cheesecake pan or a bottomless pan. And that cake, after they were baked, I could already tell that that one was going to be different and darker because a lot of the natural juices seeped out through the bottom. But what I'm going to do with the fourth cake is cut off the pineapple layer. So I'm gonna level it to just cake. We still have that gorgeous spice mix in it, which you can really see when I level off the pineapple. And Cody and I, let's just say, enjoyed a snack after lunch. <laughs> I don't want you to think that went to waste. It did not. So if you make this, I'm gonna save you the trouble. Just bake the fourth cake as cake. Done. Now I can crumb coat and chill. I love using up my crummy buttercream here. Like as I fill and stack the cakes, I always clean around the edges. Put that buttercream to good use and crumb coat and chill with it. So anywhere that your pineapple is sort of sticking out more, really make sure to use a small offset spatula and cover it with buttercream. Your crumb coat might not look very neat at this point, but you definitely just wanna seal the pineapple in. While my cake is chilling, I am going to cover a cake stand in fondant. There's something I've never said on the channel. My whole idea for this cake was not just the flavor of a pineapple upside down cake, but I want it to be an upside down pineapple. And the first thing I want to do is turn it upside down. Then I'm going to brush some piping gel onto the surface of the cake stand. This is really important because the cake stand is like a glossy kind of milk glass. Uh, so not a very sticky surface, which is good for putting cakes on, but this time I actually want something to stick to it. Yeah. And I'm going to roll out some yellow fondant. I roll it out in a big enough circle and then I use a circle cutter to cut a circle out of the center because remember it's a stand. And then I just cut a line from that inner circle out to one side and wrap it around the base of the cake stand. And just trim away the excess fondant flush to the stem. Now that the crumb coat is chilled, I am going to ice this cake with more Italian meringue buttercream and I'm gonna use a bench scraper to get it nice and smooth. So now I wanna cover like the pedestal part of the cake stand. I'm going to roll out some green fondant. I'm using a petal cutter that I have. I believe it's from a set that makes lilies. So I'm gonna cut out a whole bunch of green leaves and then once again coat the pedestal of the cake stand with piping gel. And now what I wanna do is lay these leaves on, starting at the base. And the most important thing is making sure that the cake stand is not visible anymore. Remember to brush the backs of your petals with piping gel as well once it comes to the point that you're laying petal on petal. You want all of this to stick together. And then I make my way with these leaves up the stand until it meets the yellow fondant. And now it looks like the top of an upside down pineapple. But there was one dramatic thing that happened, traumatic thing that happened while I was making this cake. You might have noticed, and I styled my hair differently today because of it, but I lost a hoop. <laughs> oh no, did it break? Jocelyn, oh, I just felt the pull on my oh, hair. No, that's what oh. I, I'm reenacting. Because we didn't capture it. <laughs> and I looked and the little part that you insert into your pierced ear was gone. It's probably still in my hair to be honest with you. I just haven't found it yet. To make myself feel better from the loss of this much gold, I had to put on this month's cake tea. 
So if you're part of our Cake Tea Club, maybe you already have this tea, you're rocking it while you're watching me right now, and if not, you still have the chance to sign up and get this month's gold cake tea. But I'll miss you. Now that our stand is prepared, we can get back to our cake. So that same yellow fondant I used on the cake stand, I'm gonna roll out a whole lot of it. The trickiest thing about covering this cake is it's on the tall side, but I'm feeling good today and I did it in one take. So you just roll it out till it's big enough. Fondant has a stretch to it. So as long as you roll it to the exact measurement, you'll be good and in fact there'll be excess, but you want excess. Now that it's on the cake, I'm gonna work on smoothing it out. I'm using a fondant smoother. I always start by smoothing the, ed the top edge of the cake. Because the cake is tall and this is so much fondant, that's where it has the tendency to rip and break. Uh, you often see me also with a straight pin and that's to get rid of any air bubbles. The next thing we're gonna do is something I used to do often, but I feel like I haven't done it on this channel. I can't think of where. I'm creating what's called a quilted pattern. And all you need is a set square. And then I like to use a veining tool. You can also use like a small roller. So we line up the shorter straight edge of the set square with the cake board. And then we press the ruler up against the cake. Not too hard, because you don't wanna indent it and then you run your veining tool right up along that diagonal line. Now I need to do this in reverse. So just turn the set square around and make the lines still diagonally, but in the other direction. And I go all the way around the cake once again. It was super hot, so if you need to put your cake away, if you find your ruler is sticking, let it chill for a bit and continue. You don't want your ruler to pull your fondant off. The whole cake has a pattern on the sides, but the top is just flat yellow. So what I decided to do is measure and mark the center of the top of the cake. And then I used a ruler and the same veining tool to extend those lines from where they end on the side to the center. And Cody pointed out something remarkable that even though a pineapple doesn't really look like that on the bottom, when you slice open a pineapple, that's the pattern yeah. of the flesh. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. If you haven't seen my original pineapple cake, which is a cake that I tried to make look like a real pineapple, then you need to click here. It's awesome. His name's Spike. He's super cool. I thought he would sort of take Walter's place. He did not. He didn't. Walter wasn't having that. No. No. I mean, watermelons are generally bigger than pineapples, so I yeah. think I know what happened. I initially cut out two daisies and sandwiched them together and then glued them on top. And then I thought it looked too small. So I cut out the largest daisy and beefed it up a bit. So it's like a beautiful little under crown, right? There's another detail I wanna add to this cake. Cause you can imagine if you turn a pineapple upside down, it's gonna be pretty surprised. So I think it needs a surprised face. I've rolled out some white, black and pink fondant really nice and thin, and I'm gonna cut out facial features using a bunch of different cutters. For the eyes, I'm going to cut out some white ovals and some black pupils that I'm using a round piping tip to cut out, and don't forget the catch light. All of my character cakes have catch lights. I think we should just sell a bunch of piping tips and just call them catch light cutters. Uh, catch light <laughs> and then people will be like, these are piping, no. There. Don't try and pipe with them, it doesn't work. I need some eyebrows, and for this I'm using a letter I cutter that I have. I use this letter I cutter a lot, because I just like the shape of it. For the mouth, I'm using two circle cutters. So a smaller circle cutter, first I cut a black circle out, and then a larger one to cut out sort of the smile. Oh, and with the pink, I used a circle cutter to cut out some cheeks, because this pineapple's flushed. She's been upside down for a while. <laughs> So now I'm going to glue these facial features onto the cake. You want to know what was so helpful? Normally I use a template to help me line up faces, but because this cake has like this diagonal grid pattern, winning again. <laughs> Your eyebrows are really quite symmetrical even with that look. Are they? Try one more time. That's pretty symmetrical. <laughs> well, she's more surprised than me. I'm not upside down. It's hard to reenact. Oh, you know what, Jocelyn, I just realized something. What? 
isn't it in Walter's contract that any time we mention him, we have to push to his video? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> Those seedy watermelons. So if you haven't seen me make Walter my watermelon cake, you can click here. Happy Walter. There's one thing I still need to do, and it's the scariest thing. <laughs> I have to lift up this cake and put it on the cake stand that I decorated. But I'm so happy because she is what I pictured. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was a great day because I got to cake something on my bucket list, which is like what I love about this channel. And thank you for watching me cake my dream cakes. Hoop dreams, you could call them. <laughs> oh, so I reached a hoop dream along with a hoop nightmare. So thank you. And thank you for comforting me on this day. Make sure to check out our new compilation over on Step by Step. You won't believe what's inside these cakes. Da, da, da.